Hey church, welcome to Devotions today. And um, today we're looking at Abraham and Isaac. But more than that, really, we're looking at Abraham and his trust with God and God's promises and God's faithfulness. In Genesis 4, God makes a promise to Abraham. He makes a promise and he says, I promise you, Abraham, that you'll be the father of many nations. So now I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham. I will give you a lot of descendants and they will become great nations. Some of them will even be kings. Then I love what God says next. He says, I will always keep the promise I've made to you and your descendants because I am your God and their God. What an incredible promise because what God does and who God is, he knows us. So he makes a promise to Abraham, who at this point is too old to have kids, and his wife is too old to have kids. So he makes the promise, but then he clarifies it and says, hey, I will always keep the promise, not because of who you are, but because of who I am. I am a promise-keeping God, and I will not only keep it for you, I will keep it for your descendants, because I'm their God too. After this incredible promise was made, Way after it was humanly possible, Abraham and Sarah have a child. They have a little boy called Isaac, their only son at this point. So after 25 years, Abraham was then told by God. So first Abraham said, God, I'm going to trust you. Okay, you're going to do it. And God said, yep, I'm going to keep my promises. Then after having this incredible promise received, God then later on in Genesis 22 says, take your son, your only son, Isaac, and whom you love and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will tell you about. This is an incredible turn of events for Abraham because now he's wrestling with, well, I, you gave me this incredible promise. I received that incredible promise. But God, now it seems like that you're trying to take this promise away from me. I can definitely relate to this in some areas of my life. I felt the promise of ministry, the, the, the promise of family, the promise of healing. And then he gives you a bit of it. And then you feel like then he asks a bit of it back. And this tug of war of faith and trust. And this is really a huge example of what do you do? What do you do when God looks like he's taking away something that he promised you? What we definitely know is for Abraham to be able to do this and for us to be able to um, trust God's promises requires a thing that we call faith. This, this, um, this thing we have is more than a religion. It's more than doctrine. It's, it's uh, faith we have in Jesus. And really what we need to do is trust God. See, God promised Abraham that he would make a great nation through Isaac. So the knowledge forced Abraham to either trust God with what most mattered to him or tr distrust God. Abraham had to choose trust. Sometimes we're presented with options which don't always seem great. And you're like, God, where's the good outcome in this? And in those times, we get to choose, do we trust God or do we trust our own circumstances, our own abilities? And we call that faith. What we need to do, which is really hard, is we need to focus on the promise and not always on the explanation. We live in a world where if we want to un try and find the answer to something, we can just type it on Google and it'll give us the reason. Or, you know, when there's a complicated math problem, we get our calculator and we try and find out the answer. We want the explanation, you know, and we're, we live in a world which is just really like, hey, don't, don't, don't just go by what you heard. Don't just go by what you have seen. Get the full explanation. Abraham, you know, was right in the middle of this issue. But this isn't new to Abraham and it's something that we experience. Whether you look at Moses by the Red Sea, it's like, well, I can see a sea in front of me, God. You're telling me to get these people out, but how can I do it? David in the cave where he he's promised to be king, but he doesn't take the life. 
uh, you know, Peter by the fire, Jesus at the cross. Uh, you know, God, not my will, but your will. This isn't a new experience for people of faith. And this is something that we need to wrestle with. But Abraham chose faith over anything. He trusted God's promises. In fact, he said something when he set off to that sacrifice. And he said this to his servants. He said, we will come back to you. We, me and my son, Isaac, are going to be coming back to you. Now, I think Abraham either thought, hey, God's either going to do something miraculous by providing a different sacrifice or God's going to have to raise Isaac from the dead. But I know God and his promise that he made to me all that time back that my family will be the father of many, that we will be generations, meant that Abraham was like, no, the miraculous God will provide a miraculous way out. So trust requires faith. I just want to encourage you as we wrap this up that I don't know the promise that you've had, but I think you probably do. And in the face of the obstacle or the impossible or the sacrifice that God might be asking you to make, you know, maybe it's financially um, and he's promised you a house and you're like, but God, I just can't figure out how to do that. And this other thing you've asked of me, choose faith, choose sacrifice, choose obedience. The lesson we've constantly learned throughout the heroes of the faith and throughout the Bible is that God is faithful. He makes and he keeps his promises. The area in which they went for the sacrifice that God sent them was, was Mount Moriah. The very definition of Mount Moriah, the actual name of the place is God will provide. I just want to leave you with that promise, not from me, but from God, that wherever God asks you for trust and faith and he has promised you, then there is a Mount Moriah for you. The direction of obedience is always to the place where God will provide. Bless you, church. Have a great day. And I'll see you at a service really soon. Bye.